You know, vision boards have been a part of our lives for a very long time and we don't even know about it. This is me at 18 years old in the Army and you can tell what my priorities are at 18 years old with all the pictures on the wall and then Arnold Schwarzenegger to uh, the right of me in the picture and you can tell I'm working out. This was by far probably the most popular barracks in the Army. Every single sergeant and officer would come to my barracks in the morning just to stay there for whatever reason. I always got inspected. But uh, this is a vision board. This was one of them. Now, this is my uh, 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 other vision board I had when I was in the Army. And you can tell some of the things in there. Picture of my father. There's a picture of Heineken, the, my favorite drink at that time. Um, you know, pictures of friends, letters, things that motivated me and kept me sane while I'm in Fort Campbell, Kentucky as the only Middle Eastern in the unit and people from Alabama and Kentucky and Tennessee, Mississippi have never met an Iranian before and I'm having a hard time making friends in a military. That kept me sane. You know, a lot of times we think there's not a lot of value to vision boards, but, but mine needs to see things. This, is, this, this was found a month after I bought my first Ferrari, the 458 Italia. This is me at 21 years old. This was found in the middle of a book. I have not seen this picture for years. I completely forgot about this. I'm at Santa Anita Racetrack here, acting as if I'm putting a key in a Ferrari, and my girlfriend at that time is taking this picture. This was a way for me to dream, saying, what if one day I drive a red Ferrari, and then today I drive the exact family base, if you look at 458, Ferrari. So, do vision boards really work? Is there really effectiveness to it? Well. One of my favorite quotes, one of my favorite quotes by Mark Twain about vision boards is how he says you can't depend on your eyes when your imagination is out of focus. You cannot depend on your eyes when your imagination is out of focus. What does that mean? To me it means you can't really, you know, depend on this thing becoming a reality because your vision is not clear on what you want your life to look like. So if you don't know what your life is going to look like, you're not going to get what you want. When I was single, and I thought I knew what I wanted as a girl. I had no clue what I was looking for. Eventually, one day I said, I'm going to get very clear height, body, toes, eyes, hair, you know, personality, energy, the way she is. That's the same exact girl I found. I married her. She's my wife now. You can see the picture there. That is my wife. Uh, we met at, uh, she was, I think, 22, 23. She was in another relationship. I was in another relationship. Years later, we started dating. Now we're married. We got a couple of kids and another one on the way purely through visualization. I visualized this human being over and over and over again until it was right in front of me and we got married. So, vision boards. Why vision boards? You heard what I said with Mark Twain. I like what Will Smith once said. Will Smith said, in my mind, I've always been an A-list Hollywood superstar. Y'all just didn't know about it yet. Think about that. In my mind, I've always been an A-list superstar. Superstar, Y'all just didn't know about it yet. That's pure visualization. That's pure imagination. That's pure vision board. Seeing what you want and then boom, it becomes a reality, right? Conor McGregor, the fighter, listen to what he says. He's absolutely all about this. He says, uh, I always teach myself common visualization stuff. It's visualizing what's going to happen. Now, the key is to make it as clear as possible to yourself. So, a few things to keep in mind when you think about vision boards is one for a source of inspiration to, I'm going to show you my vision boards. Matter of fact, we should show it here in a minute. We'll go in a minute and I'll show it to you. What the, it's, can we do that? Can we walk around and just, we'll, we'll, we'll walk around and do that so you can see what it looks like um, uh, 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 on how the source of inspiration comes from vision board as well as a constant reminder. But to me, I'm going to be very specific on how to put a vision board together. This is not the first time you're putting a vision board. If you are, it's very simple. It's easy to make it. I'm going to get it with you on exactly how I do it specifically on different parts. Now, before starting a vision board, there's five things you need to keep in mind. One, before you decide what kind of a vision board you want to make. You got to think about what you want it to represent. What is this vision board going to represent you? To me, I have three different vision boards. They each represent different things. You'll see what it is. But what is your vision board going to be representing to you? What does it mean to you? Two, think about what feeling you want it to give you. I want to see the vision board. What do I want to feel like? Emotion, fire, competitiveness, drive, agitation, bad memories, good memories. Do I want it to remind me of a thing I'm fighting for? It's my kid, it's my wife, it's my mom, dad, where I grew up in. What is it that wanted to bring that fire to me? What's a good life? Whatever's a good life to you, 
Paint a picture in your mind what's a good life. Start writing and then make that vision board be the good life that you're willing to chase and hunt and go after. Make that vision board reflect the good life that you believe in. Four, what makes life worth giving everything you got? I want to feel that from the vision board. And then the last one is when you're on your deathbed. Say on you're on your deathbed. You're 88 years old. You're diagnosed with cancer. You got one hour to live. And you're reflecting in life. What are you going to be saying? Is it gonna be, I lived my vision, I did the things that I wanted to do? What was that? What was the life you wanted? Well, be very clear with yourself now so you know it as you're coming to work, as you're getting up every morning on what you want that life to be. So with that being said, I got three types of vision boards. Let me show you what three types I got, okay? The first one is goals, like your own visuals for life. What do you want your life to look like? The second one is mind, which is philosophy and leadership. And the third one is performers. Like for me, I wanna see the big performers in life that inspire me. Let me show you this. So the first one we have here, there's three of them. I get to see this every day when I come to work. The first one we have here is Great Minds. And when you look at the Great Minds, for me, I chose different characters. If you look at here, Einstein, I'm a big Einstein guy, where you know his material is just inspirational to me. His quotes, imagination is more important than knowledge. I like sailing because it gave me a chance to get away from people. Like, why does he think that way, right? You mean I'm not going to live forever? So these are some of the things. I like his humor. I, I can only imagine how Einstein was. If he was somebody we can hang out with, what would he would talk about? I have Arnold on this side. I really like how Arnold was, how disciplined he was, how clear he was. He had a vision in his life on what he wanted. He wanted to go into Hollywood politics and make it as a big businessman. And he did all of that. Why is it? Is it luck or did he visualize that? Uh, some of my quotes that I like, the meaning of a word. Is its use in language. If a lion could talk, we could not understand him. That's probably one of my favorite quotes of all time. Um, then you have 300 here. Mother Teresa, big inspiration. Obviously very big on Alexander the Great. I like philosophy, so Plato, Socrates. I like what Kennedy did with his life for the most part. Aristotle, who worked with Alexander, big inspiration. And the list goes on. You got Lincoln on this side. You got Reagan on this side. You got Washington on this side. You got the White House here. Discover the secret to the world's greatest minds ever. I am curious about minds. Grant was a great leader. Franklin did incredible things. He was a great inventor. So this to me, when I look at this, this is purely for me to be inspired on a thinker. Like, how do you think? What are your philosophies in life? What did these leaders do? The next one is performers. I like to look at and remind myself of great performers. So if we start down here, we got Marino at that time. He had all the records. Don King, the greatest promoter. Some people may say, why isn't Don King on here? No one's been a better promoter than him. Gretzky, Jackie, Spitz. He broke uh, uh, six uh, world records on swimming, and he uh, won gold, but won, uh, broke the world record on each gold medal that he won, which is fascinating. You got LeBron at this time coming up. Barry Bonds at the time just crushing it. Will, 100 points in a game. Nolan Ryan, all-time strikeout. Hank Aaron, he had the home run record before his buddy took it over. Babe Ruth, former pitcher and incredible hitter, first guy that hit 60 home runs before Maris hit 61 over him. Schumacher, I'm a big Senna guy to see a Schumacher that was inspired by Senna to want to come and dominate. Armstrong, Dale Earnhardt, Jack, Jerry Rice, Tiger Jordan, top earners, Ray Lewis's eyes, you know, this is Elvis, this is me at 14, 18, 21. Jack Nicholson, how many times he's been nominated for actor, for uh, uh, his most nomination. He's got 12 nominations, he's won three of them. Joe DiMaggio, Ted Williams, John Wooden, Will Chamberlain, uh, Vince Lombardi, Ricky Henderson, Stolen Bases, Mia Hamm, Muhammad Ali. And the list goes on, but this to me is top performers. I'm looking at that as top performers. And then this is me. This is a visualization of what I think about. Some of the cars that I like. Some of these may be selfish goals. This is Chairman's Office, Certain Watch, Patek Felipe. Depends on what kind of watches you like. Visionary. A house in a backyard having to put a nice party and entertaining people. Another home here with a lake right up front for kids to play at. Inside the house, theater room. Some of these things have become a reality in my life. A nice game room, bar. That's, you know, part of my house right now. So big bathroom. My bathroom is so big right now, it's insane. Uh, you know, we have uh, travels, places I want to go to. What this represents to me to learn how to be at peace. My wife and I, this is the dream. Dubai, which we went to Dubai, and we stayed at that seven-star hotel, which this was made five years ago, and I just went there seven, eight months ago. So you look at an, this yacht here. We put one of the most incredible yacht parties in Dubai with a bunch of our friends and had a great time. I'll show you this because this only needs to mean a lot to you. 
This doesn't need to mean to anybody else. It doesn't need to have mean. Somebody else may say, that's arrogant. How could you put yourself here? How could you do that? It's purely what it means to you. What impact do you want to make in the world? So I need to be able to look at this and just go like this by myself. And I'm fired up. That fires me up looking at this. You have no idea what this does to me when I look at this. It jacks me up. It gets me emotional. That's what a good vision board is supposed to do to you. Let's go back here so we can finish off this episode. So those are three types of vision boards I believe in putting together. Now, things you need to remember um, as, as uh, uh, things you need to have as you're putting your vision board together. What do you need to have? First things first, pictures that matter a lot to you, friends, family, kids, upbringing, where you grew up at. Maybe you want to cut your face and put it on a nicer body because you want to have a nice body. Prior victories, a time in life that was a very difficult time in life for you uh, because it reminds you how you never want to go back to that ever again. Something that you put that no one knows anything else on what it means, but it's got a lot of meaning to you. What is that picture? So one, you'll need a lot of pictures that matter to you. Two, a list of magazines. These are my favorite magazines to use for vision boards. When I did that, it took me 14 hours to put those together. And these are some of the magazines that I suggest to use. Time Magazine is very good. Rob Report, Car and Driver, Forbes, Entrepreneur Magazine. Maxim's always very creative. They're fun. It's a little bit more creative on the way they use it. Men's Health and Women's Health, they're both good depending on the sex. Vogue, Rolling Stone, Sports Illustrator, GQ, Esquire, and whatever else you like. Travel Magazine is typically good. National Enquirer, not National Enquirer. What's the other one? Uh, 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 the one that shows all over the world with the it's yellow. National Geographic. National Geographic. National Enquirer is terrible. National Geographic to use. So that's two for magazines. Three, old books of philosophy and faith, depending on what philosophy and faith uh, you want to use. Four, quote sayings. You can cut out words and put them together, but quote sayings, image of places you want to visit, reminders of events that inspire you. Maybe you got married in Italy. You want to put that. You got something that happened to your life that means a lot. You want to put that on there. Five, uh, uh, get a book with athletes and the great ones to put the, sometimes you can find out from Sports Illustrated, but if you don't, and sport means a lot to you because it reminds you of competition, get books that have that in there for you to put it on your vision board. Um, six is uh, uh, three different boards, preferably, like I said. The dimensions I like is 24 by 36, 24 by 36, sometimes it's 24 by 37, but 24 by 36, you can go to a local place and buy the frames for it. You'll need glue, and then you'll need scissors. Three frames, go buy it at a local uh, arts and crafts store, one of those DIY places, you know, do-it-yourself places. And then while you're doing your vision board, I suggest playing the right type of music that gets you into, gets you into a mood, you know, gets you into a mood to just relax and imagine. And it's like one of these avatar types of songs that you're listening to. I listened to a song earlier today that just drove me insane. It was called The Sounds of Earth. You know, sang by this uh, man, Jordan's, Georgia's Got Talent. It was incredible. It was incredible. I posted it on my Facebook page. If you haven't seen it, you can go listen to it. But music that gets you going, similar to Moonlight Sonata, when I suggest that on the Ultimate Self-Discovery Questionnaire, something that loosens you up where you're just free. You're not tied to something. So music is very important to put you in the mood. If you want to have a glass of wine, even better to loosen you up. No distractions, none at all. If you want to do it with somebody else, it helps to have other people to do this with. Um, if you have other friends or business partners or somebody you want to, or spouse, girlfriend, husband, wife, you can do that with. When I say no distractions, I mean people coming in and out. You're doing business while you're doing this middle of the day. This is typically on a Sunday away from everybody. To uh, If you can go to a lake, if you can go somewhere else, if you can go to a quiet place where you can do that and really be loosened up, you want to do that now. Uh, um, that'd be my suggestions with that. Now, how long will it take? It all depends. If you've never done a vision board before, start with something simple. It can take you an hour to make it. It can take you all the way to a full day of making it. And last but not least, one of the things about vision boards is a vision board alone, I was the biggest critic with vision boards uh, because I was like, this stuff not going to work. What vision board? Are you out of your mind? I'm the biggest critic when it first came down to doing vision boards until I started paying attention on how many of them became a reality in my own life. Then when I understood that, I realized how much power vision boards have in our lives. When I showed that first picture of the wall with all the girls on the wall, I ended up meeting several of them. This was attracted. This was very, very strange on what happened. 
you know, when I put up the picture of the car, when I put up the picture, it doesn't matter. It has so much power over you if you do it properly. But that by itself, and you sitting home doing nothing, means nothing. Because if a vision board doesn't inspire you to take action and wake up early and get to work, it's not a good vision board. It's either it's not a good vision board or you're just lazy. A vision board needs to inspire you, but a vision board needs to also get you to want to take action, to have those things, not just be a, you know, uh, uh, something in your imagination, but something that's willing to steer your soul for you to want to go out there and, you know, get to work and make that become a reality. So those are some of the ways people ask, how do you do your vision board? That's how I've created my vision boards over the years. And uh, you may have some questions on what you want to do with your vision board, but I'm always curious to see different vision boards that people make. Uh, if you want to post it on Instagram and hashtag Patrick Bay David, I'll definitely take a look at them. If you got any comments about the vision boards, post it on the bottom. And uh, if you see this video on all over the place on YouTube, you know, my website is patrickbaydavid.com. You can go to patrickbaydavid.com with a lot of content. But if you are on Value Tamer right now and you haven't subscribed, click on that uh, button on the bottom to subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.